Hey YTPC, it is Professor Pipe Smoker, and today I'm smoking my Dr. Garbo cute little pipe here and this is the smallest pipe I own um, the bowl is extremely small and this is a really good pipe to take by the way my hands are like glazed from painting in my studio so no I don't normally run around like this this kind of pipe is really good if you want to take it with you someplace it's light enough it's small enough it's very transportable. It's good for um, just a quick smoke and a break. It's a good pipe. Um, yeah, all around too. Just, you know, wherever you want to do a quick smoke, I would recommend this pipe. It is the coolest little pipe I own. It smokes better than most of the, the pipes that I paid, you know, way more money for than this and uh, I just love this thing when it came I think when it showed up I was surprised at how small it was because it is it, it is a tight I mean look at my fingers like around it looks like my hand is gargantuan you know so it is a really good pipe now today I'm looking a lot of uh very bright like angelic because I have my work lights on in the studio and I'm working on getting this up and running and in a second I'm just gonna do a quick video uh, turnaround of the studio but this like I said if you want a quick smoke something you could take around that's very light non bulky it doesn't take up a lot of room anywhere you can put it in your pocket you can put it in your inner pocket put a little pouch with some of your favorite tobaccos this is a really good pipe uh, to do that with now if you buy this pipe on Amazon it's gonna be crazy because the picture on Amazon makes us look you know gargantuan size it's not it's very small and so a lot of reviewers are like it's tiny well, what do you expect for the price? I mean, like, I don't understand. You know, like, you're not going to get a full-size briar um, pipe that's nice for the price you're going to pay for this. I believe it's called the Duke or something like that. Um, great pipe. So, next question. What am I smoking? Glad you asked. You didn't ask. I'm presuming you would. What I am smoking currently in this pipe is velvet. It came in a package that I got with another pipe and three tobaccos. One was Sir Walter Raleigh. One was this velvet. If you guys watch my other videos... Um, I talked about, I actually did an unpacking with the velvet. And one of you viewers said, um, my father or grandfather smoked that. And I said I would do a review on it. Well, I'm going to do a review on it right now. Okay. When you look this up, as far as the kind of tobacco it is, it's a burly. Uh, tobacco. It's a Kentucky Burley tobacco. The taste is mild. They say it's an aromatic, but it's not a, like a full on. Okay, it's an aromatic, so there's no non aromatic if it's aromatic, it, but. It's a very mild, there we go, a very mild aromatic. 
It's supposed to have a licorice flavor. I don't really taste it. Nor do I really smell it. So if it's there, it is so light that it, it really, unless you have a very sensitive palate or nose, you probably will not pick up on it. It also says it's supposed to have a fruity or cherry kind of room note. Super light as well. Very light. So if you're used to like cherry ambrosia or anything like um, laying very cherry, anything along those lines, this is not it. This is not the tobacco that's going to give you that. Uh, cherry kick that you may be looking for if you're looking for a cherry aromatic. This is not going to do it. Velvet is not going to give you that. What it is going to give you is nostalgia. This is going to give you nostalgia. In other words, this tobacco had been around so long that a lot of your grandparents or father or great-grandparent had smoked this, um, this flavor, this uh, velvet, you know. A lot of, a lot of uh, older generations, there we go, smoked it. Now, I think what happens, it's kind of even with coffee. This is just, you know, kind of my, my overall um, overview of what I think. You know, in simpler times... There wasn't, there were flavorings, but it wasn't kind of crazy a little bit like it is maybe today where, you know, there's a lot of customization. There we go. A lot of these people were working class, um, like my grandfathers and stuff were working class. And, you know, my uncle, he was an engineer, but he, he, um, didn't go crazy on flavoring. He always had kind of one thing that he smoked in his pipe all the time. It was a much simpler way of thinking, I think, about tobacco. There probably were, obviously, people who smoked different types and, you know, different um, Cavendishes and, and Burleys or, or whatever. I'm not saying that. What I'm saying is, in modern times, like coffee, if you go into a Starbucks, it isn't like just, you know... Uh, two kinds of coffee, decaf and, and caffeinated, like it was in the diners, uh, or like it still is in the diners. You go into Starbucks and it's all these, you know, chai latte, oat milk, you know, with a swirl of a dazzle razzle, uh, banana flavor on it, and all this other stuff. It's kind of like that with tobacco, I think, nowadays, is like um, you have your Steady Eddies, which are kind of your classics. And then you have these kind of designer flavors. And then I don't know how long like Molto Dolce has been around for. But then you get these caramels and these um, vanillas and and honeys and all these kind of um, almost like more exotic kind of blends. There we go. Then and, and it's like your local Starbucks where you have this massive menu with all these kind of drinks and all these flavorings. And some like caramel, and some like mocha, and some like, you know, vanilla, and, and all this. And it's the same way with, with pipe uh, tobacco and smoking a pipe. Um, so the velvet is going to bring you back to the nostalgic age where it's not overly fancy or overly tasty. There we go. It's a straight-up smoke that's going to bring you back to a simpler time. And not a bad smoke. At all, it's not my cup of tea per se. I I just really love crazy flavors, and I love really kind of stronger cherries. I love stronger vanillas. I love um, like Molto Dolce just does it autumn evening, like that kind of thing. Really does it for me. This is not it. Now the tin note on this tobacco right here, the tin note is very fruity. So I thought when I smoked this, I was going to get this crazy kind of fruity, um, you know, something that it was going to taste the way uh, and smoke the way and smell the way that it smelled in the tin. It's not that at all. It's very mild. So the tin smells stronger than what you're going to get when you actually smoke the, the velvet. It has more, you can have, 
it definitely has more of the nutty burly taste to it. So you're going to get more of that, more of the tobacco kind of um, smoke on this. It's not, it's not definitely going to um, address if you're hankering for, you know, a cherry or vanilla or something that's very strong. It's not going to do that at all. It's not going to be that at all. It's just a straight up nostalgic classic smoke. That's what the velvet is. Um, the room note's not bad. It just smells like you're smoking um, not a cigarette at all. Uh, it just kind of has a very mild, smoky um, kind of smell. There's no cherry smell. There's no tin note smell that kind of transfers into the room note. It's it's just it's a plain Jane. It's just kind of a plain Jane kind of smoke. So it's not bad. I, I do notice one thing like this. My pipe normally keeps things really smoking well and this is a very well uh, packed pipe and I do notice that this uh, tobacco seems to be going out a lot more frequently than um, others that I smoke. I did notice that when I uh, opened up my canning jar it was very moist so that's probably what's causing this to have to be relit um, a little bit. I didn't dry it out, by the way. You guys know this. That I, I just at the spur of a moment pick what I want to smoke. So it isn't like I'm pre-planning my smoking day if I'm smoking at all. It's just like, oh, that looks cool. I'm going to try that today. Or, oh, I'm going to try this flavor now today. Oh, this looks good for... I kind of am like... I choose by mood. There we go. I choose by mood. And... So my mood today was, I'm going to review this velvet, because why not? And I actually put it in the smallest pipe that I have, so in case it was bad, I didn't have to throw out or, you know, toss a lot of this. And I, and I don't, by the way, toss out a lot of tobacco. There are a few times I've, I won't even review it because it's so horrible that I said, okay, we're not even going to try this one. Um, we're just... Maybe I should review horrible tobacco taste, but see here. Here's the other part. My horrible tobacco taste is somebody else's gem. Something that doesn't do it for me is going to do it for somebody else. So if I'm not a big fan of it, somebody else is a big fan of it, and there is nothing wrong. That's that's what makes us all so diverse. It's just going like going back to Starbucks again. I love the chocolate chip frappuccino. My wife doesn't like that. She likes the strawberry bang bang drink or whatever it's called. And she gets that. And she actually likes to taste many flavors of different things. And I'm more of the steady, like I like this and this and this. And uh, I stick kind of to my taste buds that, you know, what I like. I'm not a massive adventurer, but I will review, um, I will review things that uh, taste just to see what they taste like. But if I like it, it will go into my regular uh, rotation, you know, food or drink or whatever. And if I don't like it, it will it will not ever make it back into my rotation again. It'll probably sit there. Now, if the apocalypse hit and it was the last flavor on earth that I had to smoke or last tobacco on earth, well, you know, then I'd probably do it because I'd be bored because it's the apocalypse, right? Unless I'm out, you know, fighting zombies and, and trying to survive. But for the most part, or I might just be dead because it's the apocalypse. Who knows? But if I had a, um, if I, I won't get rid of it, but it's there almost as like, quadruple backup. So I have all these preferable flavors. Then I kind of have my secondary flavors. And then I have my, okay, smoke only during the apocalypse when you're out of everything else. That kind of thing. So that's kind of my stock up. And I do that for a reason. One is because I do review tobaccos here on this channel. And the second part of that is I'm not wasteful. So I'm going to keep it around. And if there's somebody that comes to my house that's a pipe smoker and I don't really like them, then I will offer them the cheapest stuff I have. 
I'm just kidding, by the way. I won't ever do that. But isn't one that be funny? Is like you get the cheap stuff. I'm gonna smoke my really good stuff over here. I've got my, you know, uh, once in a, you know, three years special aged to 433 year tobacco that I'm gonna smoke over here and be all, you know, a bougie and you know, bougie. And you guys can have this, you know, five dollar bag that I bought at a smoke shop. Not really. I'm I'm just kidding on all this. So getting back to velvet, this would not be one of my favorites. But if I mix this with something else that maybe had a little stronger flavor, then I can see this really being a good kind of base note uh, to work off of with other flavors as well. And I think that that would be really cool um, to be able to do that. I think velvet, um, I would need to dry the velvet out a little bit for this to be a really good blend with other stuff, um, which I would never do. So, uh, but if you're that kind of person, then you can do that. My take on velvet is this. It is a good nostalgic average blend, nothing to write home about, but not a bad smoke it's not the worst stuff i've ever tasted or tasted it's not the worst tobacco i've ever smelt definitely not a bad tin note at all so I, I would give the tin note a solid three i would give the room note you know about a two and a half and uh, i would give the smoke quality about a two and a half that that's kind of where i'm at with it um if I dried it out, that probably smoke quality would go up to a solid three, three and a half. It's okay. Definitely not staying lit in my pipe at all. And like I said, this pipe really always smokes very well. I have this, this really packed. Um, this is one of my better packs, but also this pipe is easy to pack really well. But it's just not staying lit on any level. It is what it is. I'm not having a bad time. You know, I'm hanging out with the YTPC community. And uh, and having a really uh, nice little smoke with y'all. And talking about Velvet and my Dr. Kerbo. Little miniature. Hardy, hey, you look like Popeye. I don't know. I think Popeye's pipe is probably different, right? At any rate, uh, go Bills, go Hamlin, by the way. If you guys didn't know, you know, Hamlin in the uh, playoff game with the Bengals uh, had cardiac arrest on the field. That's kind of the shot hurt around the world a little bit right now. Uh, he, so, uh, you know, they say it was in between like your heart resting beat, which is only about 20 milliseconds. And I can tell you from being in the music business, uh, reverb actually, you normally set it for a vocal at 20 milliseconds. It is fast. So literally he had this quick uh, resting heartbeat. Boom, went in to uh, hit it at that moment, causing arrhythmia is what they said, and then a full cardiac arrest on the field. Um, I don't know the Buffalo Bills players, but I know the people who own the Bills. I'm associated with their family, um, the Pagulas and the Kurs, And I can tell you that they are a Class A organization. They are people who have a lot of money, but it's not old money. It was new money that was uh, brought about from... Uh, there was land that... Uh, Terry Pergula bought and come to find out it was sitting on one of the largest natural gas reserves ever and he sold that land for four billion with a B dollars he bought the Bills he bought the Sabres he bought the Rochester Americans um, they invested a lot of money where I used to teach at Houghton because Kim Pergula who's Terry's husband uh, went to college there as a matter of fact Kim's dad is a retired professor from Houghton College. I taught Terry's nephew music industry stuff and so on. So I do have a lot of connections to the Bills through that family. 
but I don't know the players personally, but I can tell you that the organization was rocked to its core when, when uh, DeMar, you know, fell on the field. And um, But they are also a praying family, and as we know, he's come back. So that is all good news. Go Bills. I hope uh, you definitely go all the way this year. Um, they have worked their butts off to get where they're at. They have gone through a lot of restructure to get where they're at. they got a great coach. They've got a great organization behind them. And DeMar's got a great organization behind him. And the entire NFL and world is behind him right now, uh, hoping he gets better. And he has talked, and he's kind of out of his uh, coma now and uh, doing a lot better. Now I'm going to shut this off, and I'm going to show you what I've been doing with my studio. So this is where I'm at right now in my studio um, and what I've been wiring and working on. This is... A full-on Pro Tools based this may not mean a lot to a lot of you but it is a full uh, Pro Tools based studio this is my money makers down here some preamps if you're in the music industry you know that these are the crappiest sounding speakers but if you make them sound good on there they make them sound good on anywhere but I actually love mixing on these uh, persona scepters but this is I'm gonna wide angle this out a little bit so you all can see this today. I'm going to add a keyboard down here and wire up this entire rack. And everything else is wired and working. So um, There's more to the studio than this, but this is where I've been spending a lot of my time getting this up and running. And I'm back. <laughs> and I'm still smoking velvet. <laughs> At any rate, hope you all have a good new year so far and um, I am professor pipe smoker I approve of this pipe 100% some I approve of the tobacco I'm currently smoking not my favorite But not a train wreck by any any stretch. But any anyway, rate, YTPC, take care of yourselves. Take care of the people around you, but really take care of yourself. Little self care, little downtime will do wonders um, for your stress and for your family. And I'll see you on the next video.